Hi there, I'm Kevin from Code Magic, and I help people set up CI/CD for their Flutter apps. But as you probably know, Flutter is not just for mobile anymore, and you can build Flutter desktop apps for Mac OS, Linux, and Windows. But this isn't a talk about how you can develop these apps, it's more a talk about how you can get these apps published to the stores. And as you know, it's already difficult to publish iOS applications to the App Store, so try to think how difficult it is for the other channels. So in this demo, I'm going to show you how Flutter supports desktop apps. I'll create a Hello World app on Mac OS and then publish it to the App Store. And I really didn't know much about this a couple of weeks ago, but fortunately we're a small, close-knit team and I thankfully had people to help me learn all about how this works. And I'll link you to some of the resources I used at the end of this presentation, but hopefully you won't need them because it's not that difficult. Anyway, let's get on. Okay, so let's get started by creating a vanilla app called Sharpie. And let's change into that directory. And first of all, let's open up Visual Studio Code to see what we've got. So we'll notice that we've got an Android and iOS folder, but no mention of Mac OS, Linux, or Windows. Now that's because I haven't got Flutter desktop support enabled. So to enable this, you need to do flutter config dash dash enable macOS desktop for macOS desktop support. And likewise for Windows and for Linux. But you'll see that nothing's changed on the right hand side there. So for an existing app to generate those folders, we'll use flutter create and a dot. And then you'll see that we've got a Mac OS folder, a Windows folder, and Linux. Great. Let's just tidy this. Okay, great. So the first thing you might be tempted to do is something like this build a Windows app and you'll straight away get a message saying build Windows only supported on Windows hosts. So if you want to build desktop apps for Windows, you're going to have to use a Windows machine. Likewise for Linux, you'll get the same message that it's only supported on Linux hosts. Now because I'm on Mac OS, I can build and test my applications on this platform. So let's do something like Flutter Run minus D Mac OS and just let it build and spin up the test of this particular application. Now we'd always recommend that if you're building for different platforms that you have access to the platforms that you're distributing your apps to, especially when users start raising issues and you've got a debug for those platforms. And obviously when it comes to the CI CD pipeline, uh, platforms such as Code Magic provide Windows, Linux, Mac OS machines that you can build and distribute on, but you should always have access to those machines for development purposes and testing. So we are just gonna test this application quickly, make sure it's working. Yep, it's counting nicely. So I think at this point we can close the application and let's get it checked into source control and I'll show you how we can actually build this on Code Magic. Let's clear this. And just to reiterate the importance of smoke testing your apps on the platforms that you're deploying to, I thought I'd just show you the same application that we've checked into source code and cloned to this Windows machine. And we can just do a flutter run, minus D, Windows, and just make sure the app is doing what it's intended to do before we actually start setting up our CI CD pipeline. Okay, so let's give it a try. And it seems to be counting beautifully. Okay, great stuff. So in order to actually publish to the App Store, you're going to have to make a couple of modifications to the Mac OS app itself. So open up 
the runner.exe workspace in uh, Xcode. And if we just bring that over here, what you'll need to do is make sure that you've added the bundle identifier here. So I've got io.codemagic.sharpie and set the version and build, although these will be, or the build at least, will be incremented uh, as we set up the pipeline in Code Magic. Another thing to be aware of is that for Mac OS apps, you need to modify the uh, info.plist file. So I've already opened this up here, and what you'll need to do is add in a new key called app category, and I've set this one to entertainment. Um, if you check the documentation, um, there's quite a few different categories to select from. And I've also set the fact that my app doesn't use encryption using app uses non exempt encryption and set that to no, um, which just means that my publishing to test flight will go ahead without any manual uh, interaction. So just make sure you've set those things um, before setting up the app for publishing. Okay, so let's proceed to discuss what you're going to need in order to publish your app to the Mac OS App Store. So first of all, you're going to need an Apple Developer Program membership, uh, which is about $99 a year. And once you've got access to this, you'll be able to create the required bundle identifiers and certificates and provisioning profiles and be able to distribute your apps. Now, one of the things that you need to do in the developer portal is create a bundle ID. So you can see that I've created one here in a reverse domain format, which is io.codemagic.sharpie. So you'll need to make sure that you do this by clicking on the plus button here and then following the instructions to create a new app ID. Once you've done that, the only thing that you'll need to do is to hop over to App Store Connect, which you'll have access to once you've uh, joined the Apple Developer Program and create yourself an app. So if you go to the app section there, there's a plus button to click on where you can create a new app. And once you've done that, you'll end up with um, an app record here. One thing that you'll need to do when you're creating the app is select the bundle ID that you used in the developer portal. And once that's done, um, we'll then be able to start publishing and using Code Magic to call the Apple API to create things like the provisioning profile and distribution certificates so you don't have to do that manually. Okay, so let's look at uh, Code Magic and see how we can set this up. Okay, so let's add this application to Code Magic so we can start building it. So I've already added this application in my Code Magic demo team, as you can see here. And to do this, I clicked on Add Application, chose the team I want to add to, clicked on the button to connect the repository told it where my source code is hosted, which in this case is GitHub. And then I selected from the drop down here, my Sharpie source code repository, told it that I'm using Flutter and then clicked on add application. Now, if we go into the configuration, you can see that I've already added a Windows workflow, Linux workflow and Mac OS <coughs> workflow. Now all this means is I've got um, distinct workflows for each platform that I'm building, each with different settings. And in this case, I've told it that I'm building for Mac OS and I want to run my build on a Mac OS Premium. And then if we scroll slightly further on down and look at the build section, I can specify the Flutter version I want to build with, Xcode version, uh, whether or not I want to build a debug release or a full release. And I've also specified some build arguments here. And then we'll look at the distribution section. Here we've got our information regarding signing the macOS application. And I'm going to just use the automatic signing. 
This means that if we've created and uploaded our App Store Connect API key to Code Magic, it will be able to automatically generate provisioning profiles and, if required, distribution certificates and installer certificates for macOS applications. So the other thing that we need to define here is the bundle identifier. And I use this drop list to pick the IO Code Magic Sharpie bundle ID. If you do a quick search here, you can see this is the one that I selected. And then to actually publish to App Store Connect, you have to check this box here. And again, select the API key that you're going to be using to handle the publishing to App Store Connect. Um, and then really, at this point, all you need to be doing is saving everything that you've modified and then clicking on Start New Build. Alternatively, if you're using uh, webhooks, then you can initiate builds by pushing code to the repository. But in this case, I'm just going to manually select the branch and tell it that I want to build the macOS workflow. OK, so if we now have a look in App Store Connect, we can see that I've got some builds here. I'd already done build number one and two, and the latest one was three. And if you've installed the Test Flight app on your Mac, as long as you're using Monterey or above, you'll be able to actually distribute this app to your machine and try it out from there. Now that we've successfully built and published our macOS desktop app to the App Store Connect portal, uh, I thought we'd just have a quick word about Windows deployment to the store and uh, Linux. So in order to deploy Windows apps, you're going to need to be a member of the Microsoft Partner Center. And this is a one-time registration fee. I believe it's about $99 for a company and a bit less for individual accounts. And basically, it's slightly different in terms of the approach that we've used for macOS. Uh, for example, you're going to have to manually build uh, what's called an MSIX package and manually upload that to the Partner Center and answer some questionnaires. It's very similar to the way the Android deployment's done um, before we can actually automate it with Code Magic, but it's quite straightforward. And I'll put some links to that in the uh, notes towards the end of this demonstration. And I'd also mention that for distribution of Snapcraft, uh, or Linux applications, we'd use Snapcraft. Uh, all you need to do is create a free developer account and then you can register a Snap name, which can be deployed to Linux uh, operating system. So uh, again, I'll put some links um, regarding this where you can find out more information. So here's a link to some of the resources that I used for preparing and learning about how to build Flutter desktop apps. I found quite a few useful articles on the Code Magic blog, as well as the documentation from the Flutter team and documentation from Code Magic. So that brings us to the end of today's demonstration. Uh, hopefully, you've learned something useful. But if you've got any questions, then feel free to reach out. And thanks again for your attention. Bye bye.